Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Filipino ebook before it's gone. Kamusta kayo? Ako si Erika. Hi everybody, I'm Erika. Welcome to FilipinoPod101.com's Filipino sa Tatlong Minuto. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Filipino. In the last lesson, we learned the most common greetings in Filipino. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? This phrase can be a lifesaver. The majority of Filipino people understand English. But if you ask in Filipino, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to ask it. Nagsasalita ka ba ng Ingles? Nagsasalita ka ba ng Ingles? Let's break down the sentence. In Filipino, the verb can come before the subject. Nagsasalita means speaking, followed by ka, which means you. Next, there is ba, which is the question marking particle. After it comes nang, which acts as an object marking particle, marking ingles, which, as you might have guessed, is English. Another common way to ask if someone can speak English is, Marunong ka bang mag ingles? Literally, this means, can you do English? Marunong ka bang mag ingles? Now we're going to make these sentences formal. Filipinos follow the Spanish custom of changing a singular pronoun to plural in order to show respect in formal situations, so we change ka to kayo and then move it after ba. We also need to add po as a sign of respect. Everything else stays the same. Nagsasalita po ba kayo ng Ingles? Marunong po ba kayong mag Ingles? Nagsasalita po ba kayo ng Ingles? Marunong po ba kayong mag Ingles? If you want to be even more formal, you can add mawalang galang lang po before the sentence. It means, excuse me, mawalang galang lang po. Nagsasalita po ba kayo ng Ingles? Excuse me, do you speak English? Mawalang galang lang po. Marunong po ba kayong mag-Ingles? Here are some common responses you might hear. Oo. Yes. Oo. Konti. A little. Konti. Hindi. No. Hindi. Now it's time for Erica's tips. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can use this question with any language you need. Just substitute Ingles with Espanol for Spanish, Japon for Japanese, Italiano for Italian, Aleman for German, and so on. Now you know how to ask if people speak English or even your native language. But I hope this doesn't stop you from learning Filipino. We'll be learning more ways to say excuse me and I'm sorry in our next Filipino sa tatlong minuto lesson. Hanggang sa muli! Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin! Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. 
You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Kamusta kayo? Ako si Erika. Hi everybody, I'm Erika. Welcome to FilipinoPod101.com's Filipino sa Tatlong Minuto. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Filipino. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, Mawalang galang lang po. Nagsasalita po ba kayo ng English? Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the phrase, Mawalang galang lang po, which means, Excuse me, informal Filipino. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use this and other words when apologizing in Filipino. We can use mawalang galang lang po when we need to stop someone to ask a question. It literally means just to be rude, but it's used to mean excuse me. For example, mawalang galang lang po, nasaan po ang palengke? Excuse me, where is the market? Mawalang galang lang po. Nasaan po ang palengke? There is another phrase we use to mean excuse me, and that is paumanhin po. However, paumanhin po is used when you have bothered someone and could also mean I'm sorry. Paumanhin po. We use mawalang galang lang po and paumanhin po exclusively for formal situations. For informal situations, Filipinos usually just say, excuse me. But if there is something you really want to apologize for, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is, patawarin mo ako. It means, please forgive me. And is used in informal situations. Patawarin mo ako. In formal situations, we say, Patawarin niyo po ako. Patawarin niyo po ako. Here we added po and turned the second person pronoun into plural. Another common phrase Filipinos use for apologizing is, Pasensya na po kayo. Pasensya na po kayo. This phrase is usually heard from shopkeepers when apologizing to customers. It can be translated as, Please be patient with us. Now it's time for Erika's tips. In the Philippines, it is normal to simply say, Excuse me, or I'm sorry, since English is commonly used in conversation. You could also add po to these phrases to make them sound a bit more formal and sincere. Excuse me po, or Excuse po, I'm sorry po, or sorry po. Are you able to count in Filipino? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Filipino from 1 to 19. I'll be waiting for you in our next Filipino sa tatlong minuto lesson. Hanggang sa muli! If you're tired of knowing and speaking the language at a basic level and want to express yourself fluently just like native speakers, then you'll need to learn grammar. The problem? It can be tricky to learn. But don't worry, in this guide you'll discover how to learn and master grammar with the Grammar Bank. 1. 
where to get all of the grammar explanations you'll ever need, two, the best way to learn grammar that's right for your level, and three, how to expose yourself to real examples until the rules become natural to you with a study tool called the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the Grammar Bank? The Grammar Bank is like a grammar dictionary, except online. It's a database of the must-know grammar rules and explanations that makes it easy to look up specific rules and learn them. Look for it in the top menu of our site. Two, how do you learn grammar with it? The best way to learn grammar is not to just study rules, but to learn in context and hear the grammar used in real life. And that's exactly how you learn with our lessons. You learn a quick conversation and hear how the grammar rules are used within that conversation. Three, what if you come across grammar that you're not familiar with? Or what if you want to review a specific rule without going back to redo a lesson? That's where the grammar bank comes in. You can look up grammar rules and get the explanations, examples, and links to lessons where we cover these rules. You can also sort grammar by learning level. So if you're an absolute beginner and want to make sure you know all of the absolute beginner grammar rules, you can do just that with the grammar bank. You can also sort the rules by spelling, category, and lesson series. And if you want to get used to the grammar patterns so that you can use them in conversation and become fluent, the best way is to expose yourself to examples as much as possible. Grammar is hard at first, but gets easy once you get used to it with enough exposure. Be sure to access the related lessons inside the grammar bank and listen to the native conversations that use the rule as much as possible. So, if you want to become fluent and speak perfectly, you'll need grammar. Take advantage of the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Kamusta kayo? Ako si Erika. Hi everybody, I'm Erika. Welcome to FilipinoPod101.com's Filipino sa Tatlong Minuto. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Filipino. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying salama. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in the Philippines. Handa na ba kayo? Are you ready? Then let's start. First, we'll learn the greetings we use when meeting people. Kamusta? Kamusta. Do you remember this from the first lesson? Kamusta literally means, how are you? But it is used as hi or hello. Musta is a shortened version of kamusta, which you can use when greeting friends. Musta, for formal situations, we use kamusta po. Kamusta po. Now, here are sometimes specific greetings used when meeting people. Magandang araw. Magandang araw. Literally, magandang araw means good day. To be more specific about which time in the day we greet someone, we use magandang umaga, magandang tanghali, and magandang hapon, meaning good morning, good noon, and good afternoon respectively. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon. During the evening, there is only one greeting and that is, Magandang gabi. Magandang gabi. Maganda means beautiful or good. The connector NG is added to connect maganda and gabi. In formal situations, you just need to add po to the Filipino greetings I've already mentioned. Magandang araw po, magandang umaga po, magandang tanghali po, magandang hapon po, magandang gabi po. Are you ready for more? Next are some greetings we use when leaving. To say goodbye in Filipino, we say paalam. Paalam. 
We also have, Sige, mauna na ako. Literally, All right, I'll go ahead. And it's a more casual way of saying goodbye. Sige, mauna na ako. Finally, we have hanggang sa muli, meaning, see you again. Hanggang sa muli. Again, to make these formal, we just need to add po. Paalam po. Sige, mauna na po ako. Hanggang sa muli po. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Filipino. Let's review them all again. Here are the greetings we use when meeting people. Kamusta? Magandang araw. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali. Magandang hapon. Magandang gabi. When leaving, we have paalam. Sige, mauna na ako. Hanggang sa muli. For greeting people who are older than you, just add po. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Erica's tips. Another famous greeting you might hear in the Philippines is, Mabuhay. This literally means live, but it's used to mean welcome. It is used in formal situations like when welcoming an audience during events or when welcoming people into the country but not necessarily when welcoming guests to your home. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase, Nagsasalita ka ba ng Ingles? Do you already know it? I'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Filipino sa tatlong minuto lesson. Hanggang sa muli! Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing! But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. First, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. 
Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors, plus tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Filipino ebook before it's gone.